You know, as we round off the end of 2022 here, Halo Infinite is in a really good place. It's a shame that it took literally the entire year since launch to reach this point. But oh man, the game is in such a good place. All right, so we got an amazing sandbox. We have Forge now with custom games and now a custom game browser, even if it's com confusingly buried in the community tab instead of, you know, the play tab. There, there are some things that need fixed. There are still some minor desync issues and a lot of people are up in arms over the aim assist stuff, which is kind of weird to have on mouse and keyboard, but I only notice it when it gets in my way. I don't notice it when it's helping me really, although it has made a couple weapons feel a little better. But ultimately, like, it's a completely different game. It, it, like I said, it's a shame it took this long to get here. I know I have a couple friends who are like burned out on Infinite, Infinite now and all the changes. They're just like, I'm kind of done with it for now. Meanwhile, I uninstalled it in July when they did the big team snipers update. I was like, okay, maybe this is my time to come back. And instead, the desync was so bad that I just had to stop trying to play. And so I went from keeping it installed to check on it every so often to literally just uninstalling it. So I stopped disappointing myself. <laughs> but I played a ton of it at launch last year around this time. And so it's kind of nice to go back to it. We've had a bunch of Discord game nights, discord.gg slash Vox. It's been a blast. And... I, I I think we're reaching the point where Halo Infinite is finally quote unquote released. Obviously, there's still the disappointment with uh, you know co-op issues and whatever, but the Forge maps feel amazing. There's a lot of really good remakes in there right now that I hope get added to the pool, uh, including a much more faithful remake of the Pit uh, than the Empyrean one. The Empyrean one's still really cool, although I, I, I'm confused by some of the placement changes. But overall, it's a really cool change. Um, and being able to knock people off the map makes Oddball very interesting to play. But there's... I don't know. It, it, it's tough. I still feel like the sniper just feels terrible on mouse, which is frustrating since I like playing sniper. Uh, with the update, I guess because of the aim assist, it doesn't really feel like it, but I'm able to get no scopes better, but aiming shots, like, I don't know. There's still just this weird inconsistent delay I can't figure out that just feels really bad compared to all of the other Halo snipers. I, I don't know. I'm I'm curious to hear your all's thoughts because I was championing Halo three or Halo Halo three Halo Infinite at launch, and then it kind of really burned me for a while with the desync and some of the other sandbox issues. Like the big thing for me, I did not care about the content get drought or you know the lack of maps. For me, that doesn't make or break a game overall. It might make or break its Twitch relevancy or whatever bullcrap there. It doesn't make or break the overall relevancy for me. And for me, what does is the game feel. And Halo Infinite's game feel felt okay at launch, and I was still getting used to it and trying not to complain. But then, you know, after a while, it started feeling really, really bad. It now feels really, really good for the most part. And so when it feels that good to play, I don't mind that I'm playing on the same maps over and over. And like I said, we got a ton of good Forge ones. Now, some of the Forge ones, the scale is really off. Like, you're way too big or way too small or, like, pathways are way too big. But as people figure out Forge, we are going to get a ton of good content. And some of them look absolutely gorgeous. Some of them have that weird Forge World kind of look effect to them that Halo 5 and Halo 4, 4 and I guess Reach Forge maps got where it's like all crappy textures or whatever. But a lot of them are really beautiful. And I'll be showcasing them in future videos over on Nebula where you can watch my videos early and ad free. Uh, Nebula.tv slash Fox. Go check that out for me. The best way to sign up for that is with CuriosityStream at curiositystream.com slash epos. If you sign up, you get access to their library of thousands of documentary and educational titles for under $15 per year with our special bundle. And then you get a little email saying, welcome to Nebula. And you can check out Nebula from there. I have some videos already up there uh, from our sessions playing through some of the Forge maps. So you can check that out if you're interested. But I think if you got burned out on Halo Infinite early on like I did, or you're looking for an opportunity to jump back in based on, you know, things getting better, I'd say now is the time. The sandbox is great. The customs are great. You got custom browsers. My big complaint is you can't take your party with you for customs, which is ridiculous. There's a lot of UX things that keep getting worse over the years with Halo in regards to that that I really hope they fix. But overall, the sandbox feels incredible, and I don't think I could have said that for most of 2022. So, like I said, curious to hear your thoughts. Join us on Discord for game nights, discord.gg slash Vox, and remember to be kind. Rewind.